What's up everyone? Today we're going to be talking about the right hand rule, a very useful tool when evaluating the direction of a cross product. As always, it's important to understand why on earth we would ever need something like a cross product or a right hand rule before even delving into it. Quick review, the reason we need a cross product is to multiply two vectors together such that we get a third vector that is perpendicular to both of the first two. However, when we do this, we run into a pretty big issue, which I kind of glossed over a bit in the last video. When we look for that third vector perpendicular to the first two, that resultant vector, we have two options for how to orient that third vector perpendicular to the first two. Here, for example, I take the cross product of a cross b is equal to c, and that third vector, that resultant vector c, we can orient in one of two directions. It can either come out of the page, it's still perpendicular to a and b, it can go into the page, it's still perpendicular to a and b. Both of these are equally valid. Both of these are forming a set of three perpendicular vectors. So why does the world hate us? Which one do we choose? And how do we know how to choose which one? The answer is that it has to do with the orientation of the first two vectors, a and b. We know that we want the all three vectors, a, b, and c, to be perpendicular to each other. We know that from just our discussion on cross products. But another thing we also want is we want all three vectors, a, b, and c, to form what we call a right-handed coordinate system. And what's a right-handed coordinate system? Well, a right-handed coordinate system is a coordinate system that's defined based on your right hand and the right-hand rule for cross products. And what's the right-hand rule for cross products? Well, the right-hand rule for cross products is basically a convention for maintaining a right-handed coordinate system when taking cross products with vectors. There are three methods for the right-hand rule for cross products, all of which are totally valid, and they're actually all the same thing, just using different fingers. Um, but we're going to be covering all three of them because everyone seems to have their own favorite one. If you already know which of the three methods for the right-hand rule for cross products you want to learn or which one you need to learn, um, feel free to skip around and to see that method. Um, but if not, I encourage you to learn all three of the methods for the right-hand rule for cross products and then choose one of them as your favorite, as your go-to method that you use all the time. Um, because this will make you a more powerful physicist to know all three methods and have one as your favorite and the other two is just a learning experience as a backup that you can rely on. So the first right hand rule is the most traditionally taught one. It involves your index finger, your middle finger, and your thumb. So what you're going to want to do in this first right hand rule is say, I want to determine the direction of some cross product A cross B where uh, A is the first vector in my cross product, B is the second vector in my cross product, and you're going to take your right hand, not your left hand, we're gonna be using the right hand for all of these right hand rule for cross products, so it's called the right hand rule, um, and you're gonna take your right hand and you're gonna take the index finger on your right hand, and you will point that index finger in the direction of the first vector in the cross product, in the direction of vector A. You'll then take your middle finger and you'll take your middle finger and you'll point it in the direction of the second vector in the cross product, vector B. Now what you're going to do is you're going to stick your thumb out, let your thumb stick out, and that is the direction of A cross B, the direction your thumb points. So in, my, so in this case, uh, the thumb is pointing up, out of the chalkboard, out of the video, out of the page. So the direction of the cross product A cross B is out of the page, which we represent using our arrow convention with a dot. And to see where that comes from, you can check out the previous video on cross products where we cover that fully. And so I think it's also worth to discuss B cross A. Um, so instead of A cross B, B cross A, we're now we're putting uh, B as the first vector in our cross product and A as the second vector. We've inverted the order. So here we want to determine this direction of B cross A with the right hand rule. So we're going, to take our, um, we're going to take our index finger and we'll point that in the direction of the first vector in the cross product. We'll point that in the direction of vector B. Now take your middle finger and point that in the direction of vector A. And I can try doing that, it's turning to be like pretty difficult. And so what I have to do is realize that 
I need to invert my hand. That's what that's telling me. If my wrist isn't moving well, I'm trying to put this in, I need to invert my hand. So I'm going to invert my hand and I'm going to put, uh, so I've put um, the B, so I've put my index finger in the direction of vector B and I'm putting my middle finger in the direction of vector A and I look at what direction is my thumb pointing. My thumb is pointing down into the chalkboard into the page. This is a thumbs down right here. It is going into the chalkboard, into the page, into the plane of the video. It is going into the page and we represent that with a cross using the arrow convention and um, check out the previous video on cross products to see where that convention comes from. Um, and yeah, that's, and so we see that the direction of B cross A We've inverted the order of the cross product of the two vectors and the cross products. It's the opposite direction of the uh, vector A cross B. So now what I want to do is work through uh, two quick examples with this index finger, middle finger, uh, thumb, right hand rule for cross products. And we're going to do the same examples for all three methods and we'll find that they all give the same answers, of course. Um, and so I have my coordinate system. I have X hat pointing to the right, Y hat pointing to the north. And then z hat is this vector coming out of the page. And so the first cross product I'm going to do is y hat cross z hat. So I'm going to take the first vector, I'm going to point my index finger in the direction of the first vector, and then which is pointing up in the direction of y hat, and I'm going to point my middle finger in the direction of the second vector, which is out of the page, out of the video, out of the chalkboard. And so I've done that, and I stick my thumb out, and I see that my thumb is pointing to the right, which is in the direction of x hat according to the coordinates we defined. So I can say that y hat cross z hat is just x hat by this right hand rule. Um, another example is z hat cross x hat. So now z hat is the first vector, z hat being the vector coming out of the page, and x hat, the vector going to the right, is the second vector. So let's do this cross product. So the first vector, z hat, comes out of the page, so I'm pointing my index finger, sorry, uh, my index finger out of the page, sorry, this is out of the page, out of the chalkboard. And now the second vector, x hat, uh, points to the right. So I'm going to point my middle finger to the right. And we see that my thumb, the direction that my thumb points in, is north. And that is the direction of y hat. So z hat cross x hat is y hat. The next right-hand rule is used by the renegades that instead prefer to curl their fingers and look at the direction of their thumb. What you want to do for this right-hand rule is you'll want to say, I want to determine the direction of the cross product A cross B. So you have again your vectors A and B, and you're going to align all of your fingers, all of your fingers, especially these four ones, the ones excluding your thumb, align them all in the direction of A. Now the next thing you're going to do is you're going to curl those fingers in the direction of vector B. So you form something like a fist. So just those four fingers, curl them in the direction of vector B. And you know, if you're not able to curl your hands, if vector B is somewhere over here, and you're not able to curl your hands, you might have to invert your hand to make that fist. But in this case, vector B is over here, so we're able to curl our fingers, and in the direction of vector B, we formed a fist. And now what we want to do is we look at the direction of our thumb. And our thumb is again pointing out of the page. That is the direction of A cross B in this right-hand rule. And so just like with the other method, we saw that A cross B in this case is out of the page. And I'll just quickly show you what happens with this method for the right-hand rule for cross products if you want to calculate B cross A. So here you're going to align all your fingers in the direction of vector B and you're going to curl them in the direction of A. I'm trying to curl my fingers to form a fist, but I'm not that flexible, obviously, and none of us are. So what we have to do is invert our hand. This is where we have to play around a bit. Got to see what feels right. This doesn't feel right. Can't form a fist that way. Just try something else. Invert your hand. So I invert my hand, and I'm able to form a fist, curling my fingers in the direction of vector A. And I look at which way my thumb is pointing. This is a thumbs down thumbs down, the thumb is pointing into the page. So once again, with this method for the right-hand rule, we find that B cross A is into the page.
So now I want to use this curl fingers right hand rule to try to do these exact same two examples that we just did with the index finger, middle finger, uh, and thumb right hand rule for cross products and see if we get the same answers, which we probably should. Spoiler alert. Um, and so let's return to this example y hat cross z hat. So my first vector is y hat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to point all four of my fingers north in the direction of y hat. So all four of these fingers are aligned north in direction of y hat. And now I'm going to curl my fingers in the direction of z hat. Z hat is the direction out of the page. It's coming out of the chalkboard, out towards us. And so how do I curl my fingers in that direction? Curl it this way? No, that's not right. This way? Also not right. I have to rotate my hand 90 degrees. My fingers are still pointing in the direction of y hat. They're still going up north. And I have to curl my fingers up out of the page in the direction of z hat. And now look at the direction of my thumb. It's pointing to the right. That is the direction of x hat. Same result we found before. Let's try this one. Example two, z hat cross x hat. So here my first vector is z hat, again coming out of the page. So I'm going to point my fingers out of the page. And um, so these are my four fingers. They're pointing out of the page. They're pointing towards us. And now what I want to do is curl them in the direction of x hat. This isn't the direction of x hat. I have to rotate my hand once again so that they are curling my fingers to the right, forming a fist. So curling my fingers in the direction of x hat from after being they were aligned out of the page. And now I see that my thumb is pointing north in the direction of y hat. And once again, we find the same answer that we found before. The final version of the right-hand rule is the one that I find is least uh, commonly taught in classrooms. And in this version of the right-hand rule, this is used by non-conforming independent physics students that, you know, refuse to stoop so low as to have to make like any motions with their fingers at all. Um, here, actually, all you'll do is just you'll, you'll just use your thumb. You'll use these four fingers right here and you'll use your palm. In this right hand rule, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to say, I want to determine the direction of the cross product A cross B. And you're going to align, you're going to take your thumb and you're going to align that thumb in the direction of the first vector in the cross product, vector A. And then you're going to take these four fingers right here and align them in the direction of vector B. Um, and so here, vector B points this way, so we can just align our four fingers in direction of vector B. And once again, in this step, you might have to play around, invert your hand a bit to see what feels right. Um, but you're going to so, so align these four fingers um, in the direction of vector B. And now you have A and you have B, and now you're now going to look at the direction that your palm faces. If your palm is facing up and it is pushing out of the page, then the vector A cross B is also situated out of the page. And so we again find the same result here that we found with the previous two methods for the right hand rule for cross products. And so let's also go over the case of B cross A, where now we're doing the opposite, where B is the first vector and A is the second vector. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to align my thumb in the direction of vector B, and I'm going to align these four fingers here in the direction of vector A. And I'm trying to do that, it's really difficult, so you know what, I'm just going to invert my hand. And so now I have my thumb in the direction of vector B, and I have these four fingers aligned in direction of vector A, and now I look at which way my palm is pushing. Now my palm is on this other side of my hand right here. My palm is pushing down into the chalkboard, into the page, into the video. It's not pushing up out of the page, it's pushing down. This is the back of my hand, not my palm. This right here is my palm, and it is pushing into the chalkboard. So the direction of B cross A is, once again, with this method for the right-hand rule for cross products, it is also into the page. All three of these right-hand rules are equally valid. We saw that they all gave us the same results for these examples. Um, and in fact, they're all kind of doing the same thing. They're all using your right hand, just using different fingers and different motions. And all of these three methods for the right-hand rule for cross products 
all follow the same sort of general framework. You know, number one, you align a finger or a hand or something in the direction of the A vector to compute A cross B. Number two, you align the second finger or the more fingers or a hand in the direction of the B vector, and you might have to invert or reorient your hand a bit to get the right orientation and um, twist around and play, play a bit with uh, the second vector. And then finally, number, step number three is you look at the direction of some sort of thumb or some sort of palm or something, and that tells you the direction of the resultant vector A cross B. Quick note, if you ever have the amazing opportunity to draw a coordinate system in 3D, and you most likely will as you solve problems and have to choose coordinates and directions for X, Y, and Z and whatnot, always make sure you are drawing a right-handed coordinate system, one that X hat cross Y hat is equal to Z hat. Never draw a left-handed coordinate system where x hat cross y hat equals negative z hat. It will mess you up in all your problems. You'll be going against the conventions of society and you will be shunned to the outskirts of the physics community. And we don't want that. So that's all for this video on the right hand rule. If you became a powerful physicist and learned all three methods for calculating the right hand rule for cross products, comment down below which one do you think is my favorite, um, just based on my presentation of them, if I hid my biases or not. Um, and I will see you soon with a short video on another right hand rule used for something other than cross products. So see you then.